jump over to talk to our man Teddy Kegstad, who writes the Tiger Forex Report. Folks, you can check out Teddy's great work on the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out weekly issues every week. He talks about the Forex market. He ties in bonds, of course, yields. He ties in commodities in there as well. You can get all of our newsletters under the newsletter tab. There you will see the Tiger Forex Report. You can sign up for $97. The other thing I encourage you to check out is he just did an outstanding candlestick webinar. That's a standalone product. He talked a lot, a lot of great strategies in there. You can check that one out under the services tab. Uh, but let's get right into it. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. I hope you guys are doing well down there. Thanks so much. We are, man. We're, we're fortunate uh, where we are, especially in Florida. The offices are open in St. Pete. Uh, we got about 20 to 30 mile an hour wind steady, so it's not nothing. You know, you're aware something's going right. on. We got some rain, but thankfully dodged the most of it, and hopefully everybody stays safe a little bit further north than us because some visuals out there, some flooding and whatnot, but thankfully we're doing okay. Uh, great day to have you on, man. Where do you want to kick it off? Boy, we got some action in yields. We got some economic data. We got some action in the dollar. Uh, what are you looking at in this market, Teddy? Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Well, I have three things I want to cover today. Um, one are the economic releases over the next two days. Two is a breakdown of the uh, FX pairs. And also three, I have uh, two predictions that are going to light up your chat room. So what do you want to like talk it. about first? I like it. Let's. Uh, you, I, I like the order you marched them through, if you don't mind. Let's, let's talk about okay. some of that economic data. Yeah. Okay, so we know we're heading into holiday markets. So tomorrow you got to look out for the German retail sales and the unemployment number. That could have a little stir up for the euro. Plus you also have EU unemployment that will also amplify those two numbers. So that's big for the euro, US dollar, and also probably a little bit for the pound as well. Then we have US jobless claims tomorrow. That could probably be not really too much to worry about unless it comes really out of whack. Um, Friday we have obviously US unemployment. So those are the numbers that could impact the dollar obviously and the euro and also the pound and maybe a little bit of the Swiss so those are the, over the next two days something to look at um, especially because by Friday after your unemployment I would say just go and start your vacation because like you mentioned people this is the last week of the summer across the board so now I'm gonna give you a breakdown of the, of the markets so the dollar index right now is leaning on our 103.02 to 102.64 short-term downside correction zone. So I see the, the dollar index still to be under pressure over the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, crude oil fell just short of our 76.85 sell-off objective the other day. Now we're looking for a sideways to higher trade. We could go either way, obviously, in the short and long term, but right now I'm looking for sideways to higher. I wish it was lower. I wish I had better news for you. Um, 30 or poking near our uh, critical long-term directional pivot level at 121.21. We have an upside target zone of around 123.04 to 123.01 in that little area right there. So I see that yields could still come back a little bit more over the next couple of sessions in the next week. Overall trend obviously is a bear, but right now we're kind of in a short-term higher to neutral trade. Um, let's get to the Euro US dollar. Pressing the, uh, the dollar 0931 upside breakout level, and I think that overall we could get up to our 110.29 upside target. That's in the short run, especially if the numbers don't come out of whack too much. British pound also on a nice little bounce. We have the upside target of around 128.75 to 129.30. I think that's about all you're going to see. Let's see what happens after the holiday and the reactions, um, especially with the numbers that come out over the next two days. U.S. dollar swish is eyeballing our 108, excuse me, our, our 86.91 downside breakout level. I, no matter what, this market, as I've been saying all year, is an overall bear. Even if the dollar does start to retreat, don't, or excuse me, even if the dollar does get strong again, don't expect much out of the U.S. dollar Swiss trade. U.S. dollar JPY, this might help with the gold scenario. Um, we locked in. It's looking a little toppy right now in the short term. If the U.S. dollar continues to slip. Then I think the 145, uh, 145.09 directional pivot level is in play. That's kind of a big area for the yen, especially if we can sustain a trade below that area. That puts us really at a 142.17 to 141.03 support band where I think you could get a correction down to at least if the dollar is only in a short term pullback. That would be, a, I think, a good target zone. That would also help the gold uh, uh, markets. Australian dollar. Has a nice bounce going on overall, a big bear, but right now it's in a nice uh, profit taking bounce. I think the, the sell signal we had the other day was obviously negated today in the Tiger Report for those that um, get the uh, newsletter. 
And I think right now we're looking at an area of 66.27 to 66.92 as the top for the upside correction. I don't think you're going to get much beyond that just because Australia's economy fundamentally is in the gutter. Then we have the New Zealand dollar, which has pierced the upside breakout level, and that's targeting around the 60.086 to 61.60 area. Also, I think that's about the extreme that you'll see for a pullback profit-taking move. U.S. dollar Canada. That just fell short of our upside target level the other day at 136.51. Bearish correction could accelerate if we tick below the 134.97 downside breakout level. That's a key area. Remember, the U.S. dollar Canada has had a very strong upward slope. So for it to pull back to that area is very, very likely and not something that's out of the, you know, it's not like something that's off the, the charts. Um, the uh, correction zone is the, is the it's pretty much, uh, excuse me, the uh, 133.92 to 133.43 downside correction area is the ex extended sell-off objective for that market. Okay, so that's what I think about the FX pairs and the things to look out for the next two days. Once again, by Friday morning after unemployment, go on vacation. Now comes the two predictions I have that are going to blow your mind. All right. Go. CP CPI will be at least 25% higher over the next 15 to 18 months. The CRB index will be 40% higher over the next 15 to 18 months. Let's talk about it. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> um, so where do you get those numbers from, man? Those are lofty numbers when we're talking about potentially turning the corner here for inflation. Um, you just seeing persistence there? Are we seeing anything dramatically when you talk about CPI to that degree? Where, where are you getting that kind of analysis? Well, I think that as global slowdown, I, I predict that global slowdown is going to be collapsing over the next definitely six to 18 months. If that prediction is right, that's going to mean we're going to have more supply chain issues. We're also going to have a lot of issues in the agricultural industry, which is under attack um, globally right now. And if that continues, if we don't have a turn where people start to say no to what governments are doing to the farmers and all the other people that produce commodities around the world, it's a no-brainer that you're going to have a real, really large jump in inflationary pricing in food, oil, metals, all of those things. So that also helps gold in a big in a big way because sure. if gold is a hedge against inflation, if we do have the CRB accelerate in a big way, you can see gold up 50% over the next 15, or excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, 12 to 18 months. Yeah, it's, it's, we're all getting a quick lesson, man, and not a quick lesson. We're all getting a lesson in terms of the type of volatility. And, you know, you mentioned gold. Of course, we've been talking about my dad's got a gold report webinar, so I'm a little biased, of course, as he is. Uh, but it is remarkable when you put that gold even on a much longer term chart that, to consider that we were at, you know, 19. We're at like almost where we're trading at right now in the year 2011 in gold. Now, you made it down mm -hmm. to 1100 bucks, but boy, you talk about volatility, and maybe it's just time to see some higher prices with the type of inflation that we have in terms of stores of value. Well, Teddy, I appreciate the time as always. I know you got a little vacation, just like uh, everybody maybe in the Northeast as we near the end of the summer, but I appreciate you coming on, enlightening us as always, man. Have a great week. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and I look forward to talking to you next week, man, as always. And, uh, yeah, are you, uh, you're covering my program next week, actually, this Wednesday, I right? will be next Wednesday, Perfect. correct. So, folks, tune in. You heard the education. Um, Teddy's going to be covering the program next week. I really appreciate that as I'm out for the day, and we look forward to it, man. So we'll talk to you next week, Teddy. Thanks, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. Have a great one.